Yes, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Sound test. Oh, okay. Hey, Scott. How are you? I see Scott. Okay. So it's all yours, Mark. Okay. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Quick sound test. Can you guys hear me? Good. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Anthony, Matteo. Um, good afternoon again. My name is Mark Nicolas. I am the uh, founder of the daytradingzones.com uh, community. I've been a trader just like you for the past 20 years. I started in the uh, professional circuit. I used to be a prop shop uh, trader for a couple of firms and worked for a company called JP Capital in Fort Lauderdale as a niche fund trader in 2001. Uh, I have been uh, a, a trader just like you after that. Uh, trading my own money. Initially started in the uh, professional circuit uh, to put enough money to trade uh, uh, my own money. I didn't have enough capital. And uh, the day trading zones is a research and analysis firm that provides action zones, buy zones, caution zones, and sell zones. And we do it with a twist by mentoring uh, traders every week in sessions where we look for opportunities in credit spreads, uh, options, futures, and forex market. Uh, I'm a strong believer that you need to be a multidimensional trader, that uh, you need to have in your toolbox knowledge in all different types of markets. And after a, a, a while, you, you grow to be your own person and find out the markets that suits you the best by having diversified account and uh, paying yourself a little bit. So um, Ed is telling me I should uh, up the mic. Is, that, is the mic okay, guys? Or should I increase the volume a little bit? Is that is that good here? Yeah. Hold on one sec. Okay, so everybody tells me it's okay. 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 So the um, Kevin up. So the uh, day trading zones uh, and 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 the presentation today is really about helping me on helping you guys uh, understanding support and resistance and how to master support and resistance in your trades whether you are forex traders, options trader, or futures traders. And I'll try to give you tidbits that are going to be pragmatic and, 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 and that you can apply on Monday, whether or not uh, you have uh, the day trading zones analysis and research or tools that I can share with you from the past 20 years that I've been trading. Uh, again, I trade real money um, uh, every day. Uh, I do it uh, with also uh, a one-year program where I mentor very small groups of traders between 10 and 28 people very few times, two or three times a year. Personally, I do it, not my trading team. And um, I'm going to sh share stuff that I think will help you to think differently about your trading. So again, I started trading in 2000, uh, the 1994. And uh, the thing that you have to learn in trading is you have two choices. So you, you and nobody else have the choice to either trade at the current price. That's a bell curve, so don't be afraid. The idea is this. We have the choice. That here is the current price. We as traders have the choice to either trade the current price at any time, be then ask, or we have the choice to wait for levels to define themselves. Here it's a one standard deviation, like 20%, so it says that the stock is going to stay within a 20% range, minus 20% to the 80, or plus 20% to the 120. It could be a forex pair, it could be an option, it could be a futures, it could be anything. The idea here is that you have the choice, and nobody else has the choice to either trade at the current price, or to wait for support and resistance that have a higher probability of making you money. So how do you find and find those levels? Well, one way is traders comes in the morning, and most of the traders apply that, but they don't apply it right. They look at synergy between monthlies, weeklies, daily charts, and they look at support and resistance on their moving averages, their um, Fibonacci extensions, and their uh, market profile, or whatever is it that you like. And you look for synergies between your monthly, weekly, daily charts, or your 60-minute charts, or your 30-minute charts, or your 5-minute charts. Obviously, if on the monthly, you have a support A, so we are going to call it support A, and you go on your weekly, there's a support A very close, and on your 60 minute, there's the same support A, and on your 5 minute, there's a, a, a same support A. 
can we all agree that this particular number as a support is a strong support? Yes or no, everybody? If across time frame you keep on finding the number that is close, it could be a thousand, uh, seventeen hundred on the ES, could be sixteen ninety nine, could be seventeen o two, could be seventeen o four. You start having a cluster of support or resistance that are pretty much at the same time. So what you want to uncover as you trade in the morning is come early enough where you find high convergence of support and resistance on your support and on your resistance and you want to be able to stack those trades and play those trades. I use three trades set up to master support and resistance that I'm going to share in one second after I talk about segregation of account and the importance of paying yourself in a daily basis that shows shifts of, shift of momentum between a support and a resistance that are key. And I'll show you the two crucial mistakes that people do when they trade support and resistance. And again, this is available and, and valid for any types of market, Forex, futures, and options. So before we do that, I want to share two tidbits that have saved me from going back to a 9 to 5 jobs over the year. So here we as traders have two choices. So just that I get a feel in the room here, can you guys tell me please what is it that you trade? Are you an options trader, a futures trader, options and futures, or a forex trader, or all of it? Just curious. So we have some forex guys, futures, FX, options trader, Tina, futures, Stan, you guys are going fast. There's so many people. There's almost a thousand people here attending right now. And there is, uh, I believe, uh, Kevin was telling me this morning, 3,600 people registered for this webinar. Forex, CFDs, options, SHA, CFDs, Kim, options, Venue, futures, Momo, Forex, George, Forex. So everybody in the room have a particular market that they seems to like. But I see also a lot of guys in the room that also mix it up. And I think it's very important that you have as many tools in your toolbox to be a successful trader. Because there will be times where there will be a lot of caution zones, what I call ping pong zone on the forex, where it will be very tight before it breaks for a buy zone or sell for a sell zone. And during those times where this could last, like have you guys seen how constricted the euro is right now, quick yes, no, the Forex guys. Have you seen how the Euro Forex is super tight right now? Till the Euro Forex is going to break up or down from a ping pong range, everybody, you are going to get crucified. So in order to not be crucified, you have to be able to trade other markets like the options market or the futures market that have already created buy zone or have already created sell zones with a lot of space between that break here to the next support or that break on the buy zone to the next resistance. You got to be a versatile. You know, in 2013 when you are competing against the high frequency trading system, everybody, there is no more space left for the people that are not versatile in many markets. So here I'm going to tell you one thing that I learned over the years that have saved me from going back to a 9 to 5 job before I talk to you about trade setup in mastering support and resistance and how to quickly identify net by your net sellers on your charts without any tools, how to divide ranges by third and how it gives you a statistical edge uh, over uh, 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 many things that you use right now that are probably worthless or lagging. So, uh, and that are purely based on price action that you can use. So here's what happened. There's two types of traders everybody. There's the trader that puts everything into the same strategies and the same account. So let's say that you put $100,000 into day trading and let's say you lose 50% of your account. That will leave you a $50,000 account. The problem is when you lose 50% of your account to come back to a $100,000 account, the return on investment that it takes is not 50%. In order to go back from 50 to 100, you need a double. It's a 100% return. So what I've learned over the years with blood, tears, pain, and successes in trading and sitting uh, in the edge funds, uh, trading floors, and, and prop firms, is that the, and talking to the old school guys, the guys who've been there around the block, is that you need to segregate accounts. 
In order to survive, even if you have a $10,000 account, or even if you have a $20,000 account, you need to segregate accounts to be successful, everybody. So the, the way, you, if you take the road number two of the same trader, instead of him putting everything into day trading a particular strategy, this other trader goes, and now he becomes an astute investor, and he's going to do the following. He's going to properly segregate the $100,000 into high strategies, and he's going to put 25% in cash, in case he needs to take advantage of opportunity if he's stuck into any position. 30% of his trading is going to be divided into, let's say, stocks, dividend, cover call, safe stuff. 30% might be into option strategy where he sells premium, and I'm going to show you the power of selling premium at the end of the webinar, how you can create with small accounts, weeklies and monthlies income. And I will show you also how you can substitute futures trade and futures e-mini trades where you use five to $10,000 margin requirement per contract to be safe on your e-mini trades to use on the SPY options for less than $2,000. You can use between $1,000 and $1,500 and you can control two ES contracts. Would you, the, the futures guys, would you like me to show you that at the end of the webinar, how you can control two ES futures contract with about $1,500 in a safer way, with the same risk, but the reward will be 10 times better than the futures. And I've been doing this, I'm telling you, 20 years, you know. I've been uh, mentoring small groups at uh, Goldman, uh, Deutsche Bank, and UBs for the past 10 years, and I'll show you how it's being done, and it's being done every day by hedge funds to hedge themselves, okay? So, and the last thing, when you segregate account, you could spend 10% in more aggressive stuff like currencies, day trading futures, or S&P, SPY weekly options. Now, here's what happened. If you are the same day trader who is going to lose 50% of his account on the day trading side, now you are only uh, gambling 15% of $100,000, which is 15000 If you lose 50% of that, you are going to have 7.5 left. If this uh, strategy is on the options grows realistically Conservatively, at 10% per year, you grow your account by $3,000, so it goes from 30 to 33, right there. This one goes in cash, 25,000. This one grows about 4%. This one, you lose 50%. Now, it's a big difference now. See, by segregating account in different broker and accounts, everybody, here's what you've learned. You've learned to keep 96.7% of your asset. So, question to everybody, is it difficult to come back from a 3.3% loss? Yes or no? By experience. Is that easy to come back from a 3.3% drawdown in your account versus coming back from a 50% loss here that requires a 50% return on investment to come back where you were? So it is crucial nowadays that when you have scandals like P, uh, PFG, uh, Madoff, and all those stuff, that we traders and retail traders and investors protect ourselves by being uh, diversified within different brokers, different strategies, because you don't know. We just don't know which broker is going on there tomorrow. So now, when you want to master support and resistance for any market, there's three trade setups that are going to be extremely powerful. And I'm going to show you right now, before we go back to the chart, I don't really like to do slide, actually I have only five slides, then I show you after my broker account and my uh, um, uh, chart so that we can take real examples, but I want to give you the concept. The concept is there's three trade setup to be successful in trading support and resistance, and concept of trading support and resistance that crucified traders. The first one is dash to dash. So in our day trading zones on the full pro tool, the dashes are the most important zone, okay? And uh, from there, usually above the dashes, we might have a strong buy zone. Below the dashes, we might have a strong sell zone. And we use different trade setup. One trade setup that traders miss all the time is this. They go from the support, so higher highs, higher lows, higher highs on your tape, to the resistance here. But the problem is that when they reach the resistance, everybody, they sell at the resistance there long, which is OK. Right there, so far, it's OK. The crucial mistake number one is this. They proceed right away to go short. What you have to understand is all the market makers, all the professionals, especially if it's an ES number or whatever, or even a, a very important 
weekly, monthly, daily, whatever cross time frame numbers, you have to understand that the market makers, the professionals, they know that numbers, they see that numbers coming. So the market makers on the floors, they see that all the newbies are going to pile up all their stops here. So they are going to take the shot here, and they are going to put the stop just a little bit above. What they usually do, if it's a 1700 round number on the ES, they'll push you all the way to 1706, 1710. And what they'll do is they push all the stops, which creates a vacuum. When they take all the retail trader stops, they create a little vacuum where they can finally unload into your stops. So they sell into your stops, and now they start selling, and then this is what I call the hook. And when the hook happens and the cross-recross happens, that's the same 1700 that I'm shorting. But do is, is that 1700, everybody, 1700 part 1 and 1700 part 2, part 2? Is it those two created equal? Even though they are the same price, everyone, are they created equal? Yes or no? Let's see. Let's see what you answer. It's the same 1700, but is it a created equal 1700? So perhaps the 1700 part 1 touch at 945, and perhaps the part 2 start selling at 3.30 in the afternoon. Is this part the, the same equal part one? The difference now is that the momentum is in your favor. It went above, it recrossed below, the shift of momentum have happened. This is a preferred trade setup. It's called the cross-recross trade setup number two in our day trading zones, of our important day trading zones. Because now you have a higher probability than part one to short and make money. Now there's a favorite trade of mine, which is cross-recross your important support and resistance and the retest with lower high. It could be a little below, it could be right on the zone, it could be a little bit above, so long that this short here, S2, is lower high than this high here, which is the neutral point of the top. So long that it is a lower high, you put a stop on that high, and it's a cross, recross, retest, lower high, and you put your stop. This S3, the retest lower high, you will see in all my chart, it plays again and again for day trading, for position trading, for everything that you are going to trade. Does that make sense, everybody? Because this is powerful. Those, those three trade setup I'm going to give you, I assure you, you are going to observe them in support and resistance that you trade next week, and you're going to say, shit, I see this pattern again and again and again. And this cross recross retest is superior to the number two, the cross recross because now not only you have the shift of momentum, but you have the lower high in place. Now there's another setup. is the cluster high and the cluster low, everyone. This is the tricky one also where a lot of traders lose money. You have a net buyer here. I call him B1. You have a net seller here, S1. You have a net buyer, B2. And here's what the trader do or does. You have a net seller, S2, on that channel. Here's what most newbie does and screwed up. Short and anticipate the break here at B3. But guess what happened? If you shorted B3 here, you have a 66% chance of losing money. Do you understand? Because there was already, you have only one chance out of three that it works. Does that make sense, everybody? You have already a proven pattern that two times out of three, that support has been holding and creating the channel. Two points form a channel here and here. This points plus this point form a channel. So on S3, most of the retail traders, they say, oh, okay, now it's the break. And when it's the break, everybody, they are going to lose money. What you got to do is wait for the S3. They come back in the channel a third time. And on that third touch, this is where you trade, and you trade with a 66% chance of success. But what I do, I use only 50% of my intended size. So when it comes back at the third touch, whether you trade Forex, options, or futures, which is extremely powerful here, you take the short, but you take the short with the stop loss on the high candle here, on that high candle here, because they are not always perfectly symmetrically equal. And then what happens is you put 50% of your size here, and when they recross the day trading zones, 
important zone that I'm looking for, then I take the average between those two, and my average is somewhere here. It's much better than the sucker who got here on the break, because the sucker who gets the break here, everybody, the retail trader that short here, usually what happens is the same guy who tried to short it here, he lost minus two on these futures, he lost minus two on these futures, finally when the break happens, he makes plus four plus commissions, he's not making money for the rest of the day. Does that make sense, everybody? Quick yes, no. JD, not necessarily. I'll answer all questions between, I'll try to be done in about 20, 25 minutes if Kevin and the guys at the uh, Real Traders webinar allows me uh, to answer questions for five, ten minutes. But here it's key. This is key, guys. If you master that coming into Monday, you have a choice. Either you are going to trade support to resistance and lose money. Either you are going to short the bottom of a cluster and lose money, or you are going to buy the top of a break and lose money. You buy bottom of channels, you short top of channels. You do wait for a cross recross shift of momentum, or you wait for a cross recross retest. And this is where, guys, you'll make a lot of money, and, and, and you'll be at least putting the probabilities in your side. Does that make sense, everybody, before I move on? Because I'm going to move to real short and option strategies that I wanted to show you. And we are going to look at many charts together, and we are going to look at those patterns, those cross recrosses, retest, those cross by cluster lows. I want to show them in real charts. So first of all, what I use in the morning, I use one screen. It's called my trade navigator. So it's a Ninja chart that I use. Uh, love Ninja. It's easy. You can download it for free. Have our stuff plugged in, and uh, and it's pretty cool. I have an eSignal too, where I use the full Pro tool for all the markets. So we offer the analysis for nine markets, uh, where we construct buy zone, sell zones by 8 a.m. Eastern time. We also uh, have a get together live on Tuesday where we look for opportunity, everybody. And so I want to show you some of those buy zones, sell zones, and I want to show you charts that you guys are going to call. I don't do a lot of Forex, guys. The only Forex pairs that I trade is the Euro futures. I have decided in the Forex side that instead of being the jack of all trades, I would be uh, rather be the, the jack of one and master of none. You know, they say uh, the jack of all trade, master of none. I think you need to master and focus on no more than five markets. Does that make sense, everybody? Everybody. Five markets. I think that if you are a trader, you should focus on no more than five markets. So your five markets for me, when I trade, my five markets are the yes, because I do a lot of SPY buy and sell weekly options, and I do a lot of credit spreads for weekly op uh, income and monthly income. I do Apple for weekly income and Google for weekly income. So you have my four here. And I look at the crude. Those are usually 70% of my trade. And then sometimes I found a good position trade that I like on the bonds with TLT and TBT for the options. I don't like to do the futures on the bond. Okay, so I substitute TLT, TBT. And I like the Euro futures or the Euro FX or the FXC, the ETF for the future, the Forex guys. Does that make sense, everybody? So essentially what I'm telling you is with those trades set up in mastering support and resistance, try to master and look no more than five to seven symbols in your screens and day trade. If you are a day trader, do not look more than that. If I show you my full pro tool with my watch list, here, I have more than that here, but guess what? Number one, I think, is about 25 on the watch list here. But everything besides those five or seven I showed you, everybody, be everything be besides those five or seven I showed you, I use only for credit spread. I'm trying to look for high volatility where I can make weekly and monthly income. So quick question in the room. Who doesn't know anything about credit spread? Say me. Who doesn't know the power of making uh, weekly and monthly income with 68% to 95% chance of success instead of being a gambler at 50-50 each time you place a day trade on any market? Just curious how many people in this room have no clue of what credit spreads are. Wow, interesting. Interesting. Keep on being honest. 
So far, I see uh, at least 150 people, right, Kevin? Yeah, look, look at Gary. At least we have yeah, Gary. At least we have Gary knows, he knows. You have the echo on uh, your thing, Kevin. So anyway, the, this is interesting. So um, every Tuesday, uh, besides, uh, next Tuesday I'll do one. I have an open door where you can come and see me trade live. I have real money. If I see real money trades, I'll show you real money on st stuff that I've done. Uh, what I do on Tuesday is uh, we have our guys from the Day Trading Zones, Daily Analysis members. They come, we uh, hunt for trades, and I can show you how we structure those trades at 68% to 95% chance of success. I have a free event next week if you want to come anyway. And what happened is credit spreads are very powerful because, see, if you want to avoid the up and down here, I'm going to take this channel. Can everybody see this channel, yes or no? on the euro the euro weekly okay so here's what happened guys and most of the time that's what will happen and i want to show you this and one of the big mistake and gambling trade that most of us do without knowing better if you trade the euro here what are the chances you get crucified on that on this range boom 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 a lot of people get crucified in those ranges same right now there's a tight range on the euro 32, 31, 31, 33 for the past few weeks. Each time you have those consolidation, again, it's net buyer, net seller on the ping pong trades that I just showed you. But look, look at the trade, the day trading zones behavior since 2008. Our payroll around 120, can you guys see it on the Euro futures? The full pro tool on the day trading zone shows you an up arrow to shift the momentum and blue dots. Blue dots are a continuation of a long with a 66, 60 to 66% chance of success, depending on the time frame. Obviously, the weeklies are stronger. We went from 120 to 155. And by the way, I'm not showing you a screenshot to look good. I'm showing you a real, uh, this is my software platforms. You know that I'm showing. So we went from 120 to 155. Then you see the trend number four, cluster high, cluster low, the break, the retest number three, can everybody see that? The retest number three, here in 2009-2010, retest number three around 148. 148 goes all the way to about 117. Okay, 117 does the cross, recross, retest lower high. Fail, goes all the way down, recross the dashes of the day trading zones, retest the day trading zones, that's the trade setup number three that I love. Retest at 125, 125, 145, okay? 145, back down. So the guys like George Soros and all those guys that you see on TV, do you think that they, they trade this right there, those channels? Do you think seriously that George Soros uh, trade this? Quick yes, no. What's your opinion, the Forex guys? Since there's a lot of Forex guys today, there's a lot of forex speakers coming. Do you think he trades this? Do you think that Roger trades this? Okay. Most of them have tools like this. Cross, recross, retest. And what they capture is the trend. They capture the idea of the economic global picture of what's going on. And that's what they do. They do not day trade. They do not day trade and scalp. Scalping is for day traders. Josh Soros is not a day trader. He positioned on billions from a big support to a big resistance. Does that make sense, everyone? Quick yes, no. Since you are Forex, I'm trying to talk to you about something. Okay? So now, if you look at other charts, I want to show you Apple. Everybody and their mothers have been investing in Apple. So look at Apple now. Same pattern. You look at the shift of momentum on your chart, you had down arrow, ping that, continuation long, up arrow in 2009, blue that, blue that, blue that, blue that, no ping that. There's not one ping that on the tools from 2009 to 2012, everybody. That's a three-year move on Apple from about 120 to 700, okay? So in case you don't know, that's about six times your money, right? And then they have the double top, shift of momentum, down arrow, 
ping that, cross, recross the day trading zones, retest. Look, I'm going to zoom so you can see it even better. Can everybody see it better? Quick yes, no? And so what you use also is you use the power of the MACD to confirm the shift of momentum. So cross, recross, but they are lagging. Sometimes they are not lagging, sometimes they are. Here the fast MACD was before the, the, the arrow. This slow MACD, so the 1699 MACD is a so fast. The slow MACD is a 12.26.9, and you can use that for your forex pairs as well. So look what happened. Cross, recross, down arrow, retest, that's my number three. And look at that retest was done a little bit above. Stop loss here, boom, from 625 all the way down. Let me show you Netflix. And so what I use here is we have 27 zones. And from those 27 zones every morning and the, the up arrow, down arrow, cluster high, cluster low, like this, we form this analysis for our members that do not, cannot uh, come or it's not in their budget to attend the one-year mentorship program. What they do is they come here and they get the nine markets that we mainly trade. And what we do is we take the 27 zones and condense them into seven zones to simplify. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, seven to eight zones. Does that make sense? So I have 28 zones with complicated up arrow, down arrow, cluster high, cluster low, make this, and we put everything into actions, buy zones, sell zones, caution zones, sell zones for those seven markets. And that includes also the Euro futures, by the way. So let's look at charts, and let me show you some shift of momentum. And I want to show you cluster high and cluster lows that you guys can use on your charts without tools. You know, you don't need the tools. I'm going to do a white chart and show you. So look at now Netflix. Look at Netflix. Same. Pull a weekly chart on Netflix. Look at this. See, if you mix up being a day trader plus an investor, which you should to be an intelligent, smart, astute trader, you should have like here, up arrow 2009 from ping that down arrow, blue that all the way from about 20 area, 20, 30, 40 area here, all the way to 300, okay? So just FYI, that's uh, 15 times your money. Then he cross, recross, down arrow, ping that all the way back to 50 on Netflix. He cross, recross, and it retest. Can everybody see that retest? Because that's my favorite one. So when he touched 150 and held the day trading zones at 150 here, people thought the uh, um, Netflix was at resistance. It was not at resistance, look. It was at support. And then they proceeded to go from dash to dash at the 312 to double again the trade. Do you guys see that? Quick yes, no. So when you do that, no, not necessarily jumping jacks. Would you have bought lips? You can look at lips, but I don't like lips, uh, Jack. And the reason being I don't like lips, and I'll explain that, is the time decay of the options. When you have an option, and I'll explain to everybody, you have three components, and that's why most people lose an option, and I will explain. But I'll explain after I show you the power of options. First, I want to finish on uh, support and resistance, and I promise I'll get back to you. So now look. I want to show you cool stuff that you need to you can apply yourself without any. Do you want me to show you support and resistance techniques that you can apply, everybody, with no tools, no tools. For free, I share with you powerful stuff I learned for 20 years. Would you like that? Would you like me to take two minutes and do that with you on blank charts? Just blank charts. Just boom, blank charts. Stuff that can change your life. Yep? You sure? Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Everybody's saying yes. So here it happened. Look at the yes. I want to show everybody the yes. When you look at charts, guys, or you look at daily charts, you look for cluster high and cluster low. You look for areas that have been tested by the market. So can we all agree here that there is support around here on the ES? Quick yes, no. An area of support and interest around here. Just visually on your chart. Can we agree if I keep, go, keep on going up, going up to find another interest on my charts where there is net buyer, net seller, that this area right there, around here, seems to be an interest zone as well, right there, 1650, 1655. Yes or no? Visually, 
Let me show you. Because you are going to learn to trade my trade setup I just gave you for nothing. Cross, recross, shift of momentum, cross, recross, retest, cross, recross, ping pong guy, ping pong glows, clusters. And look what happened. Is that a cross, recross on the yes and a retest that failed here? Yes or no? Look what happened. Boom. To the next support. Yep. And then they came back, they retested again. Boom. They rejected. Look again. Cross, recross, retest. Do you see it? Number three from the day trading zones. Isn't it magic? Because now you have it with no tools. You have it right there on blank chart with your eyes. See? Cross, recross, retest, which was support, you know? And now they go, they go, they go, and they break that pattern. That pattern here becomes support now. So all that 50, 55 on the ES becomes support. Now, let's look for another area of interest, everybody. Is this another area of interest? He, voila, here. Yes or no? Everyone, right there. So, now, if this is an, an area of interest, you do the same exercise, everyone. You do the cross, recross, retest, failure. Boom. Is that powerful, everyone? No indicator, nothing. Just those three powerful trades up I just showed you. And boom, it's right there. It's just pure price action in front of everyone here. This is the power of cluster high, cluster low, and price action. I have a friend who is an hedge fund manager. He manages $168 million. He does that plus the day trading zones. You know, Denis Morales, Horizon Point Wealth Management, uh, uh, $80, $90 million uh, hedge fund. Another friend, they use our tools with financial advisors, and they do this exercise plus this plus the mic this. How difficult is that? Is that difficult, everybody? Is that keeping your trading to the most simple simplicity? If you focus on five markets, five markets, and you forget all the crap that you are being shown, five markets, and you master support and resistance, which all hedge funds, all futures professionals, all pension funds rely on, all financial advisors rely on, major support and resistance. How difficult is that? Okay? This is a very, very profound, everybody. So now, here is an option trade that I'm going to show you. But first, would you like me to show you how to trade two ES contract if you are a futures uh, trader in this room, where you usually use five to $10,000 a contract for about 1000 to $1,500. Would you like me to show you how you can better use your money now? And I'll finish this webinar before I get kicked out by Kevin by showing you how you can create monthly and weekly source of income by using time decay of the options with a 68 to a 95% chance of success. And if Kevin is, uh, 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 could do this favor to the entire community, he could post you, I had done a, a master credit spread part one and part two with an hedge fund manager who is a friend and client of mine, uh, free for the Real Traders webinar community, and we had done also a master uh, SPY versus uh, ES. Would you guys like that? If Kevin uh, can share that link later on, or those two links, or he'll send that in an email, uh, I think you'll see it's very powerful. Okay? Yeah, so, I'll find those links now, Mark, and I'll be sharing them. Oh, that's, that's cool. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. So here, here it is. What I want to show you in the futures, we're coming, coming back to a little bit of, of PowerPoint. And if you're interested, come and see us live Tuesday. It's not my uh, financial analyst. It's not my team. I do have a team, but I am the only one that trades. I trade. I, I, I supervise the analysis for the hedge funds and the uh, prop shops that we deliver with the retail public our analysis to. And I try as far as much as possible to share 20 years of experience with you guys being like a, 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 with the small amount of time that I have tra share with you some, some tidbits that have helped me to survive all of this and, and help you be a consistent trader so that as you become a consistent trader then you, you don't forget that 
hey, listen, hey, that crazy Frenchman was really giving us powerful stuff to, to build on. Again, like I said, came in the U.S. 20 years ago, married to an American princess, and one of the only things I've done in my life is trade. I've been a trader, I've been a hedge fund trader, a prop trader, and just a day trader like you with my own money, and consult for prop firms, small hedge funds, and I trade very small group every year of 28 people, 28 traders. So now, let me show you. So, uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's go to the next slide. Do you see that slide, guys? Everybody, everyone, do, are we back on slide? So now I want to show everybody the power of thinking differently, not only segregating your accounts between Forex, futures, and options, but I want everybody to really, in a, in a, in a very uh, profound way, to think, what is the best way to use my money right now each time that I come every morning with the highest probability of success? So number one, everyone, if you trade the futures right now, the problem with the futures, you have three choices, and you need to understand the equivalences. If you trade the yes, two contract yes, you've got to know that two contract yes equal 10 at the money contract on the SPY weekly options equal 1,000 shares of the SPY, where as of Friday, the SPY was around 169, 168, which means that if you buy the equivalence on the SPY of 1,000 shares, it requires $168,000 in margin requirements. You don't have that, I don't have that, and even if I have it, to trade, I will never concentrate $168,000 in one position. It's not smart. It's not the best use of your money. The second thing that people use is $10,000 per contract on the ES, and most of the traders use 2.0 ES stop loss, which is $100, which is smart. They are risking about a percent of their account of the $10,000. Do you follow me, everybody? Yes or no? So if the equivalent of two contracts you use $20,000, then your stop loss will be $200. And $200,000 is much better than $168,000 in margin requirements or in cash requirements. But now here's what happened. There's something even more profound and powerful. You can get between a buck, between a buck to two bucks at the money options around the current price of the SPY and control 10 contracts of the options for a thousand to two thousand dollars. So here's what happened. You, in capital requirements, instead of using twenty thousand dollars, you use one to two thousand dollars, which leaves you nineteen thousand dollars to either trade one futures or another two futures, right? So now you are diversified because you trade two futures plus ten contracts on the option, so you can edge yourself and do edging, edging strategies. Or you can uh, do some Forex, futures, and the options together with a $20,000 account. Does that make sense? But if you do futures alone, you start doing just futures with two contracts. Does that make sense, everybody? So now I prove to you, and I'll show you in, in real option chains in one second, that this is real. This is not a joke. I do that every day. So you prove to you that you use uh, the options is very powerful because you have the same leverage as two contract ES, but yet you have $19,000 left to do what you want. Now look at the stop loss. You risk two points here, which is $200. But look what I do. I put a stop loss at 20 cents. I risk the same. So now look what happened. I risk the same. I risk the same amount of money, everyone. But get, look what happened. I use 19 times less capital. And look at the rate of return. If you are a good a good options trader, uh, a futures trader, you might make four points. Four points is $200. So let's say you have two contracts, it's $400. $400 in relationship to $2,000, $20,000 in requirement is only uh, 2% return on your capital. Do we all agree? Yes or no? Whereas your options, when it starts moving 20 cents, 40 cents, it gives you 20% to 150% return on your money. So not only you use with the same risk 20 times less money, but the rate of return, and that's what a lot of people don't know, you don't understand the, the power of options. You make 20 times to 150 times more money. Is that very powerful, the options player in the room? Yes or no? The futures traders in the room, if you have never understood that before. Because that 
can change your life. That will change your life. And will help you to think differently about your trading, everyone. Big time. So here's what happened, everybody. Let me show you a real broker account and uh, show you some stuff if you don't believe the price and the potential move. Can you guys see the broker account? I pull an option chain on the SPY. And we are going to go and track exactly what I said. We are going to look at eight strikes. And we are going to go and get going. If I look at the current price on the SPY, is 169.53, everybody. That's the current price. Okay? Sorry, I'm not a Picasso. Now, if I look at the money options, which is a 68.50, is right there. So if you are bullish or bearish, look where it is. Right there. 68.50 is there here. So if you are bullish, you would pay 148 to 158, which is exactly what I told you. And if you are bearish, you would pay 106 for that put. Do you guys see that? Quick yes, no, everybody. Because this is extremely powerful. Yes or no? Right there. So what I told you is you buy 10 contracts, which is the equivalent of 1,000 shares. You would pay 1,060 here. 1,060 versus the ES here, $20,000 to contract. 2 ES, 10 contract, same equivalent. Now let's look at the move. Would you guys want to see the move that happened for the past few days on those options? Just curious. Let's pull a chart and look what happened for the past two, three days on this. If we can pull an option. Here we go. This option unfortunately open on open when? On uh, hold on. Let's do two days, three days, five minute chart. Okay, can you guys see this option? Yes or no? Quickly everybody, yes or no? Look at the high of the option. A dollar fifty two the dollar fifty two was on Thursday. On Thursday, if you should to bought those put at the day trading zone sixteen ninety, you would have made here fifty percent on your money. Fifty cents. Does that make sense? 50 cents? So about what? 50 cents divided by a dollar 50 is not quite, it's not quite 50%. It's 50 divided by a uh, dollar 30. It's 48%. Can everybody see that? Because I want to show you how it was predictable with the day trading zones again. Yes or no? See this? 48%. I will compare this with the e minis and the yes quickly. So let me show you a day trading zones chart of a 60 minute chart of the uh, ES. Do you see how beautiful the day trading zones called the 90 here? Yes or no? See it here? Yes or no? Look at the dash. Right there. 1690. See it? So that's the touch, the retest that fell, retest that fell. So let's say you are slow poke instead of taking the 90 entry you take the 87 entry. Well, if you took the 87 entry to the 77 low, that's 10 points on your ES. 10 points on your ES, everyone, is $500 profit. $500 profit divided by $10,000 requirement to be safe on your E-minis is 5% return. You compare 5% return from top to bottom to 48.5% return. So, quick question to everybody. Was my theory real in practice showing you the past three days action in option chain and trade and trade support and resistance? Yes or no? I just demonstrated that guys. It's very powerful. Very powerful. Okay? Good. So now let me tell you something. The problem in options is I use a very small amount of money to buy options to buy the weekly. I myself use between $1,000 to $3,000 to buy and sell options, sometimes a maximum of $10,000 because I have a bigger account, but I never use more than 3 to 8% of my account to do directional on options and futures. I still trade futures, but mostly crude. Okay? So here's what happened. I use the crude because the next question is, when, when do you use options or futures then? 
I use the futures for intranight play on the support and resistance of the cross recross when they might do manipulations intranight. And I use also the day trading zones, everybody, for edging myself against my options. Because if I am mainly long in my options intranight, and I see a cross recross retest right there, going down, down, down intranight, the only way I'm going to edge myself at the open on my losing options is short the TF or short the ES or whatever. Does that make sense, everybody? So essentially, my futures become an intranight edge for me because they are open 24-7 for my options play. Now, would you, I don't have a lot of time, but I will show you next Tuesday when you come at the live webinar. This, I, uh, Kevin is going to get me out, and I'll answer a few questions. It's uh, five before, the, five before I believe the next speaker is coming in. I will show you next week the power of selling options. Because here's what happened. 90% of the options buyer lose money. So not only you have to have good support and resistance, but you have to understand how uh, options work. The reason options are dangerous is because if this is an option premium of $1, and why 90% of the people selling options make money, why 90% of the sellers makes money and why the professionals, the hedge funds, my best friend who works in an hedge fund that made 76 to 86 percent return for the past eight years, he works for over 300 million dollar hedge funds, like 76 to 86 percent is by selling premium. When you sell premium, you create a weekly income and monthly income with a 68 percent chance to a 95 percent chance. Is that a better chance than flipping the card at 15 to 50 and day trading anything with the bid and risk trade? Yes or no? I will show you that Tuesday because I just don't have the time. But essentially that $1 in this option, if there's a $1 option, you might have 30 cents in real value. You might have in time value 40 cents. And you might have 30 cents in volatility. And what happens is those three components keep on moving up and down and create the entire pricing of your options. And a lot of people don't understand why they lost in options year after year after year after year. Crucified in options where most of the billionaires in the world make billions on options, stock options. How do you think Mark Zuckerberg is Mark Zuckerberg? How do you think Bill Gates is Bill Gates? How do you think all those guys who make billions it's with their stock options. Does that make sense, everybody? So there is a lot of power in creating your own option plan and your own op stock options, even if you don't work for Dell, even if you don't work for Netflix, even if you don't work for Facebook, you guys, you guys can be extremely astute and create your own option plan. You know, you have two choices. Nobody puts a gun in you. You can buy and sell every day like an idiot and and and. Uh, a uh, uh, retarded gambler, buy bid and ask spread without knowing where are your support and resistance, and clicking and clicking and giving commissions to your brokers. Or you can, in an astute fashion, putting your support and resistance and overlaying strategies that have 68 to 95 percent chance of success when also you sell options. Because by expiration, that time value, that 40 cents is worth zero. So the buyer of options, if it's a weekly option that starts Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what they don't know is when you buy the option at one buck here, re let's say that everything rem remains equal, the directions remains equal. Let's say that the time value, and uh, the time, not the time value, the volatility remains equal, your option will be worth 60 cents, 60 cents at the end of the expiration day on the weeklies because that time value crushed. So essentially, the buyer of options was the sucker buying a $1 asset that became a $0.60 cents asset the next week. And the guy who sold the option, who made the money? Who made the, um, the money? The guy selling on Tuesday, Wednesday, when the volatility uh, accelerate and the time decay accelerate by the end of the week. Who makes the money? The buyer of options or the seller of options? And those guys make 68% chance to 95% chance winning trades, and I do that with my traders every week, every year for the past 10 years. They sell the options. They sell because the sucker buy. I buy and sell, but when I buy and sell, I buy and sell intraday to replace my ES 
and to have the leverage that I showed you. So I mix it up. I do Forex in one account. I do the options cash account with the uh, weekly options, with a cash account so you don't have to be tagged with pattern day trading. And you sell premium. And when you sell premium, you start creating weekly and monthly income, guys. This is extremely powerful. So again, if you want to learn more, you can get free training video from our site, daytradingzones.com. Um, what's his name? Kevin will post the offer page uh, that he gave you all along. Uh, there's an offer page where you can get my free ebook. It's free about uh, probability trading and free training videos. And if you sign for that, you will also receive an email that will invite you to the free event next week. We'll do a free event Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to having all of you guys at the Chart Blast. You know, we will be either at 12 o'clock or at 4.15 on Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to having you guys. The week after, we don't have a Chart Blast. I'll be in vacation. You take care, everybody. Hopefully, you learn a lot. I want to think, thank again Kevin to be a, a regular contributor for the uh, Real Traders community. I come a lot. I try to share a lot. Uh, Kevin will be able to to uh, give you the offer link and those credit spreads replay. And again, thank you very much. Hopefully that was helpful. You take care, everybody. You have a great weekend. Thank you for taking your time on the Saturday.